Let's have a look at looping in N8N. There are a few different ways to create loops. One of the most common ones is the loop node. The other one is looping itself just within a node. So by default, the nodes will loop over the records. The, the thing with the nodes looping, the node itself will loop over the records and then the next node will loop over the same records and so on. With the loop node, it gives you the ability to have lots of different nodes in the loop so that then you can come back and, and go back and start the loop again. So with the loop, whenever it, it gets added in here, it gets added by default at the moment with the loop and replace me node and linking that here. It'll also often, if you put it in the middle here, let's just add one in here so that you can see at the moment, by default, you add it in and it will actually connect the next node to the done branch which you don't want generally so uh, that depends you know if that's if that's what's happening after you do the the node loop or after you do the looping uh, but more often than not you're inserting it before the nodes that you want to loop on so generally it's getting rid of these ones getting rid of this connection and then connecting it like that so we'll just take that out move it back in and so I'll just turn this off here for now and we will, we don't need to do anything straight off. We can just run it and it'll go into the loop and at the moment it's going to run one at a time because of the batch size is one by default. We also have the adder option of reset, which I'll come back to in a minute. So with the loop node, pretty much just any loop, any nodes that you have after this are going to be a loop. And then once you reach the end of that, then you need to tie it back to start the loop again. So let's set a manual mapping here and we'll just say string equals test three, four. Uh, so there's that. So now if I run it, this will execute once. So at the moment we're getting three items coming in on the left hand side. So if we go into this loop, we've got three items here and we're getting one of the loop branches is running and then it's ending here. At the moment there is no loop so it's just going to go through one so we bring this back and plug it into the left hand side of the loop this time when we run it it'll go through and it does it instantly uh, but you can see now that we have the loop branch says three items and the done branch also says three items so if i just add a wait node in here just for one second so we can see it running so we execute you can see it goes to the wait then it loops back around runs it again and comes back so let's just change that to three, so it still goes a bit fast. So now with that delay, let's run it again. We can see it goes to the weight, loops back around, goes to the weight, loops back around. Okay, so you can see it working there. And then interestingly, the loop does it three times and then out of the done will come the three as well. So you then could loop uh, again with different items if you want. Often after you've done the loop, you wanna add a limit node limit to, to one, just so that it then whatever you do after it isn't going to run multiple times. It depends, maybe you want it to do that, but generally more often you won't and you'll want it to just run once and then you can have your other nodes here. If we hit tidy, it will kind of tidy it up a little bit into a bit of a better uh, format for us. So that is the, the loop node. One thing I will cover now, should we cover it now? Yeah, we may as well is a loop within a loop. So you often have this kind of structure where let's say you have a hierarchy of say customers to orders. So each customer can have multiple orders. Each order can only have one customer. So you might need to loop through your customers and then loop through their orders, something like that. So let's just add in a, we'll add in a set node here. And we'll just add an array of, what should we say? Let's say it's orders. Array and it's order one, order two, order three. So let's call them uh, A, B, C so they don't get mixed up with the others. C. So we're just creating an array there. 
and we'll split it out just so that we can see that's what we're doing. Execute that. Pop that in up here. We should now get it split out. Great, we do. Okay, so now let's just tidy that. Now we have get rid of that one. We have a loop here that's starting, and let's say we're looping customers here. Like it's about there we go, customers, and then this loop is going to loop orders. So we've got the loop within a loop. Now for the orders, we'll just say uh, we don't need to do anything. Let's just put a wait loop, a wait node in here. It's going to wait three seconds. Then it's going to loop back around. So we want to process all three orders. Then once it's done, we do want to add a limit because we want to go back to the next customer. But we don't want to go back and repeat for the next customer the number of orders. So as I said out here, we've got this one here going three items. We don't want to do the same thing down here when we loop through the three. So out of the done, we want to limit it to one. Then this one here, we want to loop all the way back to loop customers. I'll bring it down here so you can see it a bit more clearly. So theoretically, this will come in. We've got the three customers, for example, here. We're going to edit fields. We're going to wait. We're going to uh, create the, the orders here, split them out so that we can then loop through three times, then go back. And each time so we should have this this bit should run three times times three so we should effectively have it you know nine so let's just run it and see what happens so we're coming into here we're running once twice third time now we're going through the done path a second and we're coming back up here and we're going up and we're saying two this is the second time and third time so you've got nine so interestingly oops i just deleted it there so interesting you saw it you saw it run this loop once and then it came back through and it was running here but it didn't run this again and you can sort of you can see from the numbers here it's got three but it's got an 18 here but the loop itself didn't run so what you need to do is that's where this reset option comes in handy and so you can't just reset it by default like this every time because that won't work and you can see here that's listed in the done branch it's got all the it's got all the repetitions here but uh, it, it seems just sort of odd like uh, how's it done here it did one it did one it did one then it did three then it did six and nine doesn't quite make sense so what we do is we can change this to expression and we can say a dollar sign prev node dot name and we'll use three equals here and you can use speech marks or the apostrophes and we want to say the node immediately preceding this at the moment is called split out one so we'll, we'll call it that split out one so now what we're saying is when this is true when the previous node is called split out one reset this loop so at the moment when it goes through this loop the first time it goes into it goes into the loop then it goes into the wait then it comes back around so the previous node when we're doing this loop is wait one. The only time the previous node is when you first come into this node from this branch at the top here. So now if we run it, we see it starts off, goes through, does the inner loop three times. Then comes back down to done and comes back up here again, running along. And now we're back in this inner loop again. We run it once, we run it twice three times so now we're getting the actual kind of running that we want because each time we start this loop we don't want to use any previous data or information we want to reset this in a loop to be focused on whatever data is coming into it from the previous node so there we go so now we run that and uh, that's that's kind of the main use case for the for the loop node it's really handy for doing these multiple nodes and then also for these kind of inner nodes as I said, you can just have each node can do its own looping. Another one you can do looping in is, of course, a code node. So you can, uh, by default, it'll actually show a loop here for you, which will loop through the input items. Uh, and so you can have loops in there. The other one, or other two, one is where you just loop, like, let's say you had a HTTP request node and say it, it does some call in this in this node and then you want to loop back afterwards you can do that 
So you can just loop back. You don't need a loop node if you don't want to. You might perform something and then let's say we go after this, we might go back to the loop node and do something else. The tricky thing here is you need to be cautious of creating an infinite loop. So you can't really do it like that. Usually you'd add in like an if or, or a switch statement. And so then maybe it's okay, true, it'll carry on, but false, you want to repeat it again. So a use case might be if the, let's say, the status code from the HTTP request, let's say it returns status, then if it's equal to 429, it's a number, which would be like a rate limiting error code. If it's, if it is 429, if it's true, then we might want to loop around and say, okay, give it another go, but maybe we'd say, let's wait five seconds before we go and do that. So that's a, a standard loop as well. And then if it's not true, we can carry on. Let's just bring that down a bit. We can carry on and do whatever we want to do if we know that this call has succeeded. So we might have a loop like that as well. So as I say, you, you still need to be a little bit cautious, careful here that you're not going to get stuck in an infinite loop. So you might need uh, an additional out clause for maybe running it a certain number of times. Uh, which reminds me, in the in the loop index, if we jump into it here, you do get, in the loop node rather, so you get a run index, which is the index of the current run of the current node execution. And it's also zero based, so it starts at zero. So the first time, you can see the preview here, if I click on it again, you can see the preview is two, because this is run three of three, and because it's zero based, it starts at zero. So the first run is zero, this isn't run number one, this is run number two, which is why this preview down here is showing two. So that's quite handy if you need to use the, the run index, use the, the loop counter there for whatever reason. The, the other one that I'm aware of and, and use on a somewhat regular basis is a bit more complicated. So I'm not going to go into it. I'll go into it in a separate uh, video, I think. And that is using the pagination option in an HTTP request node. So I'll do that when I talk about the HTTP request node. As you can see, it's a bit more complex.